Hi, and welcome to Brooms to Puzzles, and back to the World Puzzle Federation 2015, where I'm doing the final round from 2015, Round 8. These were puzzles set by um, puzzle creators from the United Kingdom, and this first puzzle, Classic Sudoku 1, is a 20-point puzzle set by T Tom Collier. Now, what do I mean by points? Well, if you haven't seen these before, um, the World Puzzle Federation packs come from a set of competition packs, this one from back in 2015, where there were 600 points of puzzles available and solvers were given 90 minutes to try and solve as many of the puzzles as they can. Um, and then they would submit those points and compete to see who was the fastest and best solver. Now, I don't enjoy competitive solving, and there's a couple of elements to competitive solving that I don't really like, one of which is you're aiming for speed rather than um, a logical proof. So quite often when you're solving a puzzle, if you get down to something where there's two possible ways to go, you will pick one and try and solve it to break it rather than find uh, try and find a logical proof. Because if you get the right answer, it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you do it quickly. So um, picking an a path and trying to break it as quickly as possible is better than trying to find a logical proof, which is not what I like to do. But that is definitely a way to go. Um, but that's not the way I'm going to be approaching these puzzles. Now, back in 2015, the winner of this particular round was um, uh, Timony Doyle with 900... Was it Timony or Timothy? I may have... Um, type that wrong, but um, with 950 points, how do you get more than um, 600? But there's only 600 points worth of puzzles. If you submit your answer, um, if you were to submit all of your answers before um, fast, um, then you would get more points based on how quickly you submitted them. So he submitted all of those in 55 minutes. So he had it because he took less than the 90 minutes, all of his points were rounded up because he took less than the 90 minutes. Now, only 13. Uh, only 34 people out of everyone who competed sent in all 13 puzzles. And of those 34 people, 10 of them got something wrong. They did not get all of the 13 puzzles correct. So that gives you an idea of just how many people are at that level of solving. Now, only 75 people scored more than 400 points in the 90 minutes, and only 121 people scored more than 300 points, which is the halfway mark. So when it really boils down to it, there's not that many people who are actually back in 2015 who are actually solving at a level to get you know huge numbers of points so bear that in mind if you're taking a while and you're trying to solve logically that you will you know if, if you can do a logical solve and you're getting say you know 10 point or was it five points a minute or 10 points a minute you're doing quite well i'm not trying to do the math but i'm trying to give you some stats anyway what I'm going to be doing is presenting all of the puzzles in this pack. There'll be a link below to this puzzle as well as to the entire World Puzzle Federation archive. But let's have a look at Classic Sudoku 1 from Round 8 of the 2015 World Puzzle Federation. So this is a classic Sudoku, so the rules are quite simple. How do the rules work? Normal Sudoku rules apply. So into every box, into every row, and into every column, the digits 1 to 9 must be placed without repetition. Now, as I said, this is a 20-point puzzle. So if you were trying to be uh, Mr. Doyle um, or, um, and trying to you know do this in under an hour, you would be aiming for about 10 points a minute. So you'd be trying to do this in about two minutes. Um, and if you were um, trying to get into that thing where you're in the top 100 who only scored 300 points what's that about 15 points um and, uh, sorry 15 points five bit bit under five points a minute i think that is so you'd be aiming to be doing this in about six minutes so maybe i've got that math wrong i'm terrible at that sort of math in my head maybe i should have prepared it in advance but um yeah so bear those numbers in mind but i'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer not going to go for speed, as you can see. Let's give this a shot. So I am, because this is the first puzzle I'm solving in this pack, I'm going to go through the basics of how I solve the notation I use and what I look for and what things are called if I can see them. So I, the first thing I see is there's twos looking down into box nine already in these columns. Um, so two, and I can see where two goes in box nine, but I'm going to show you the way that I'm going to try and notate this and what the notation means. So these two twos looking down would mean two has to be in one of these two whoops, one of these two spots, because two couldn't, um, couldn't go here. Now, the reason I'm putting twos in the corner, and yes, I know I can narrow that down further. The reason I'm putting twos in the corner is I use a corner 
mark in a classic Sudoku when a digit can only go into two places in a box. And these two twos are limiting two down to only two places in the box because this cell is already filled. Then I can immediately see that this two is looking across, eliminating this two pencil mark. And when I pencil mark in the corners, once I eliminate one of those pencil marks, I can immediately fill in the other cell, hopefully with the correct digit. And this allows me to continue with that sort of pencil marking. This two eliminates two from all of those. This two eliminates two from those. This two eliminates two from there. And I can put a two corner mark in there. Um, now, I'm just trying to see if I can continue with twos. I can. Two, two, and two allows me to put two into one of those. But I can actually take this a little further, I think. This two is eliminating those. This two is eliminating those. So I can get to put two in one of those, which means two now can't be in those or those. Because this is these twos are pointing. If I was to put two in anywhere in these three cells, then that would eliminate two from both of those. And I couldn't put a two at all in box four. So two can't be in those, can't be in those. And this two is looking down saying not there. So this is a two, meaning this isn't a two and this is a two. Now, these are digits that someone who's speed solving would just write in, but I'm trying to demonstrate how the notation works and how I'm going to put in notation so that if you're following on the video, you'll then be able to see why I'm removing options as I go. As I get further through the pack, I'll probably do this a little less, but at the beginning where I'm trying to be more beginning for a beginner friendly, this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to show you um, uh, what I think is what I think this is called a hidden single, which is in column seven. I just noticed that one only has one place to go. Um, so one can't go here because there's a one looking at it. One can't go here. There's a one looking at it, and one can't go here because there's a one looking at it. So I've of the four available cells for a one in the column three of them are eliminated. So this is a hidden one. And then I can use these ones pointing across to place a one into this cell. Um, I'm actually gonna mark this triple because I quite like triples, I find them useful. Um, and I help find it, it helps me narrow it down. These are four, six, and nine. Now, why am I putting those digits into the middle of those cells? Well, if I look at that row, all of the digits except four, six, and nine have already been placed. So those three cells in that row can only possibly take those three digits. So where a corner mark was a marking saying that two could only go into those three cells, I wasn't restricting what could go into those cells. I was just restricting two, two into those possible two cells. Whereas with the center marks, I'm specifically noting a restriction of what can go into those cells because these cells can only take four, six, or nine. So therefore I know that four, six, and nine are the only possibilities. And because a six sees this one, I can remove the six and I know this cell can only be a four or a nine. I have another triple in column seven. These can only be three, six, or nine. So this is a three, six, nine, and this is actually going to give me something because this one can't be a six, not that useful, but this one can't be a three. And because this one can't be a three, I now have four, six, and nine restricted to three cells in that box. So if this is a six, this becomes a four, nine. If this is a nine, this becomes four, six. And all of those, because I've got three cells that can only contain those three digits, I can't use those digits anywhere else. Otherwise I would run out of options for these three cells. So if I was to put a six here, this would be a nine, this would be a four, and this couldn't be four, six or nine. I've run out of options. This is basically, this is what we call a, a triple because we know that those three digits have to go into those three cells. So what are the digits that haven't been placed? Well, the seven, now looks up saying that this is the seven and this is the five because they're the digits that haven't been placed in the box. The other way I could have done that is pencil mark five, seven being the only digits that can't go into all of those and then use the seven looking up, making that the five and that the seven. But now I know from this four, six, nine triple that four must go into one of those two. So if I was to put a four here, there would be no four in box six. So this can't be a four. And that puts four in one of these two cells because four can't go in those, four can't go in those, and four can't go there. So four is in one of those two. Again, I'm probably not solving this the most efficient way, but hopefully people who are not familiar with Sudoku are able to follow along with what I'm doing. 
Okay, so uh, there's much more obvious stuff. Five and five. Five can't go in any of those. Those are already filled. This becomes a five. Now five can't go into any of those. So five is in one of those two. Okay. This is a quadruple, but I can actually do better than that. Forget the quadruple. Seven can't be in any of those or there, and the rest of the digits are full. This is a seven. And now I know where six is because six is looking down, can't go in any of those and the others are full. So this is the six, which puts six down here. I don't want to mark six in three possible cells like this because it means that if I was to remove one of those sixes, it doesn't automatically place the other. You might do that in variant Sudoku, but I try not to do it in classic Sudoku. But this is now a pair. I haven't placed four or eight into this box. So now I know I can't put four or eight into any of those cells. But what I can do is I can say four in this box isn't there or there or there, and four has to be in one of those two. But this is now a triple because I can't use four or eight in any of those cells as well as the digits that are already placed by the given digits. So one, two, I can't use three, four, five, six, or seven or eight. So these are a one, two, nine triple. Now, the other thing I could have asked to speed that up even further is where is one in this column? Because this one is eliminating one from those. This becomes a two, nine pair. The two looks across making that the nine, that the two, this is not the two. Now, this makes this a one. Now, you notice how what that has done is I've written a one into a cell that had a two corner mark, and now that I've only got one two corner mark left, and because I trust my corner marks, at least at this point I do, I know because I put a one where this, um, where this two corner mark was, that means this now has to be the two, and I've just put a two where a four corner mark was, which means this has to be the four, and I'm using those corner marks to speed up my solving. I don't need to rediscover what I found there. Now I can use these two fours to eliminate four from all of those, and that four to eliminate four from here, and I can put four in here. This four, of course, resolved this eight and four, and I would have been faster if I'd noticed that at the beginning but I didn't. Um, and now I've got all sorts of triples all over the place. So these are seven, eight, nine in order to um, complete the box because I already had one through six, but there's a nine looking up. So those are not the nine. This has to be the nine. And this is a seven, eight. So this column is only missing a single digit, which appears to be a six. So this box is now only missing two digits, which is three and eight. And this three is looking across, making that the eight and that the three. This is not a fast solve, but hopefully you can follow along. Now, I've already got one, two, three, um, five, six, and seven. So these are four, eight, and nine to complete this row. Well, now, we knew this couldn't be a four because I already had the four pencil marks or the four looking up. I don't know anything about the others. And I could even remove those corner marks now if I wanted to, because when you've got a triple like this, it's kind of self-containing. But, and I might do that in other solves, but what it means is the four, the eight, and the nine have to go here. So this now can't be a nine or else these three cells would have to contain four and eight only. And I can't fit, fill three cells with, in, a, or in a row or a box with only two digits. So this becomes the six, which takes six out of here. This becomes a four nine and this becomes the six, which looks up as saying this isn't the six. Okay, where now? I'm my eyes are just not normally drawn at this point to rows, columns, or boxes that ha already have a lot of digits in them. And I can see I've already got six digits in row eight. So these digits that I haven't placed are one, four, and eight. And there's already a four here. So I can remove the four and place the four here. Now, the other way to see that, of course, would have been to ask where is four? See these fours looking across or to ask where is four in this row? But filling out the triple gave me the same information. I think it's easier to follow along on the video and I got to the same point. So that's what matters to me. The one looks down making this the eight and this the one and I get everything. That's cool. Now the four looks up making that the nine and that the four. And now my eyes are automatically drawn to the triple here because I haven't placed one, eight and nine. And now I can use the trick I saw before. One can't go into any of those, but those are two of the empty cells. So this has to be the one, which means these have to be the eight, nine. And once this is an eight, nine, that can't be a nine or both of those would have to be an eight. That's the three, 
that's the nine. This is a pair. I don't have a three or an eight, and I've got an eight here looking across, making this the three and this the eight. This is now a known pair because I've got one, two, three, four. I don't have a five or a seven. This is a five, seven pair. I'm not sure how to resolve that yet, but down, what I haven't placed in this box now is 369. 369 seems to come up a lot. Three can't go here, six can't go here because of the digits already looking down. Okay, let's look at this pair. I've already got one, two, three, four. I don't have a five. I've got a six. I don't have a seven. So this is another five, seven. Now this is giving me a five, seven pair in the um, in this column, which means none of these could take 5, 7. And because of the rows, none of those can take 5, 7. I don't know if that's going to help me or not, but it is something worth noting. So this is a pair. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. These are 5 and 6 because I've already got 7, 8, 9. And the 5 is looking across, making this the 6 and this the 5. Now that is going to do it because now between these two 5s, I can't put 5s in any of those. So 5 has to go in one of those two. But this 5, 7 pair is looking up. If this was a 5, both of those would have to be 7. And I've put two 7s in this column, which doesn't work. This isn't the 5. This is the 5, which makes that the 7 and that the 5, which which looks down, making that the seven and that the five. Okay, this now, oh, this eight, nine is looking across, making this the eight and this the nine, and the eight is looking back, making that the seven and that the eight. This is gonna do a lot of work. I haven't placed a three in this row yet, so this becomes the three, which I can look down, remove that three. I now have a six, nine pair, which makes this the three. Um, Let's do these triples. These are four, six, and seven. Now I already know four's not here because of the pencil marks and I can confirm that, but there's already also a seven in that column. So this becomes the six and this is a four, seven pair. And when you're down to a pair like this, there's no point keeping your corner marks because it's redundant information. The pair is telling me that I've only got four and seven in those cells anyway. The seven is looking up, making that the four and that the seven. And these digits now have to be one, eight and nine. That's come up again. But there's a one in both of these columns already. So there's no one in those, this is the one. Now the six is looking down, making this the nine and this the six. The nine is looking up, making this the eight, allowing me to take eight out of those. And then I use the four to make that the nine and that the four, the nine to look up, making that the eight and that the nine. And this took me 13 minutes. Now, 13 minutes is an incredibly slow solve for a 20 point puzzle. First of all, I'm not worried about speed. Never will be. Um, I do try and provide the speed so people who are trying to do a measure against me or something like that, perfectly fine for that. But I hope that the explanations I gave and everything are useful. I won't go into this level of detail again in this pack. When I start the next series, I will. Um, but as I um, do new logic and everything, I will explain those, but I'm not going to explain how pencil marks work again or anything like that. I'll just use them. Um, hopefully that will be useful to you. And I'm not going to explain pointing pairs or any, or any of that sort of stuff again. Um, I figure once a month is enough. I hope this series is fun for everyone. I hope this is a puzzle that everyone was able to fly through a lot faster than me. Um, and I hope the information about how the scoring and everything worked, um, I've been talking to some people and trying to learn more, is useful. Thanks everyone for watching. And as always, good luck with your solving.